If this video gets 10,000 likes, I will go bigger and better than the current world record for very rare trade-ups. Also, soon after recording this video, I'm going to pick the winner of the Titanium White Octane from the last Very Rare Drop Trade-Up video. Let's just go for another one again today. This is slowly turning into the Rocket League podcast series where I do trade-ups, get cool items, and also talk about stuff that you guys want me to talk about, usually found over on Twitter, which you can go and follow me at PickaPixelYT. If you are in the majority of people watching this video that have not subscribed and are a part of the Pixel Army, then please do subscribe down below as we are very, very close to 860,000 subscribers on the road to 900,000, at which point I'll be giving away the Titanium White Apex wheel, of course, and obviously a million. It's going to be the biggest giveaway ever. It's going to be everything. <laughs> this is the current state of Egapixel. The hair is growing back. We're getting there. <laughs> so sit back and relax. We have a bunch of trade-ups to do, so you might as well get started. I asked the lovely people over on Twitter. I said, basically, this series has become a little bit of a podcast series on top of everything else because there's so many trade-ups to do that I want you to see the bulk of. But, you know, what am I going to talk about for 20, 25 minutes, half an hour? Trust me, I can blag. I can speak about what I'm seeing on the screen. I could be like, for example, oh, Sky Blue Breakout. That's pretty cool. I tell you something interesting about the Breakout is back in the day, I used to use the Breakout in Rocket League. If you go back to all of my videos you can see that i was using the breakout and as you can see down there lower in the trade window we have the dot matrix and back then the dot matrix was all the rage when the champion series came out with the dominus gt and everything else the dot matrix was the coolest looking decal in the game and i tell you one time i did a rare trader right just five rare items and i got the dot matrix and my reaction was parallel Oh, to that of what could have been a black standard, but it's an orange standard. So there you go. I could easily take what I'm seeing on the screen and speak for ages about it because there's Rocket League items. It's always something to necessarily talk about, even if it's literally have a little look at the item that I get and then make some kind of joke about it. Pixel fire. I mean, that just is me. I could link that to the Champions 2 series, go all the way back to 2016 and talk about Rocket League in 2016, the Champion series, all that good stuff. The fact that I used the Roadhog as my first ever car in Rocket League. League. Actually, no. Common misconception. I used to always say I started with the Roadhog, but I actually started initially, initially with the Hot Shot. Why on earth, when I was given the very few cars you could actually use in Rocket League at the beginning, I chose the Hot Shot over literally the Octane, which you are starting with? I have no idea. But as you can see, I can find a way to blag and talk about all sorts of things. So I figured I'd go to Twitter and ask you guys what you would want me to touch on. So I figured I would do that. There were a lot of comments because at the time of recording, it's very much news of the world right now. And it might be old news by the time this video goes out. But of course, the European Super League. And if you don't know, I do have an interest in football. I actually have a football channel on YouTube, which I may touch on later on, actually. But basically, the European Super League has pretty much fallen apart at this point. All of the English clubs have pulled out of it, which means... It's not going to go ahead. The Premier League is already the most lucrative league in the world for football. So you can't you you can't do the European Super League without any teams from the Premier League, not to mention the Bundesliga and PSG. I was going to say League 1, but PSG. Now, a lot of you guys may not know that much about football, but my thoughts on it, it's a clear cash grab. I understand why they're doing it. I mean, they're, they're, it's definitely, I just trade up White Diomedes. I forgot that once your trade window is full, it used to be if you went like this, and then went to five. You could go to five here and override it. But now it only lets you do the, the max amount of items. So that was an accident. But we move. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a clear cash grab. I get why they've done it. But they, they obviously don't know or really understand the extent to which, which football is important to many, many fans and many generations of fans. So all in all, I think it's a good thing that it's been essentially overturned by the power of the fans. And that's my thought on it. You know, those are my thoughts on it. There's another Sky Blue breakout. Again, we could talk about that, but we're going to move on. Um, th those are my thoughts on it. You've pretty much heard everything about the ESL that I could possibly say. My views pretty much align with the general population and public about that. And I know that some of you, whilst a lot of you do have an interest in football, I will say that. Not all of you do. So we will move swiftly on. I mean, someone said, like, just literally asked me to speak about my experience working in McDonald's. And I mean, I've done videos about it. I've done the odd, cut, cut, the odd cut commentary here and there. There was the time that my manager put her hand down my trousers to check if I was wearing a belt. And if you're thinking to yourself, that is very, that's crazy. That's outrageous. It's unnecessary and potentially a little bit illegal. You would 
most likely be justified in thinking those things. It's not as bad as it sounds, though. She didn't, like, take a hand and just whack it down my trousers. It was more of, like, a two-finger thing. But it, 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 that's still so weird. That's so weird to talk about. But other than that situation and, you know, run-ins with the managers and stuff like that, which didn't happen often, but naturally, when there's that sort of hierarchy system, it sometimes does feel very much the crew members against the managers. You know, if they weren't the cool managers that sort of let you do things, how, you know, crew members know how to do things efficiently. You know what I mean? But they kind of do maybe break some rules along the way. And when it's not crew members against managers, it's a good time. But naturally, there is that kind of divide sometimes when a manager has to put their foot down and say, you know, you know, tr basically tell the crew members what to do. There's a burnt sienna standard. We'll move swiftly on. We are, of course, going to try and get another white octane. Will we get it? No. I don't think we will. I don't see a situation in which we get white octanes back to back in episodes. But if Rocket League want to nice me, that would be great. I would love it if Rocket League could give me a titanium white octane. But honestly, my experience was actually quite good. I was actually very healthy when I worked there. Whilst I was at McDonald's, I went through the process of getting my braces off and then having a retainer. And I thought, you know, it's a win-win. You're supposed to wear your retainer quite a lot. Like most of the time, they actually recommend all times when you're not eating for the first few months after you get your braces off. So I thought, hey, I'm going to do that. So I wore my retainer to work at McDonald's because if you don't know, I'm sure you could assume this, but McDonald's employees... They do get free meals. Like, you can get a McDonald's meal for free every single shift you take. You can get, like... They, they basically, when I worked there, they did a point system where certain foods, certain dishes were worth points. So, like, a Big Mac, which I, I've never had a Big Mac because I'm not one for, like, sauce and all that. Um, but a Big Mac, like, a proper meal would be, like, a lot of points. But if you wanted to have, like, a little dessert, that could be one point. But if you wanted to have a side instead or some fries, that could be one point. And you had an allotted amount of points per shift um, to have your meal. You could have drinks. Oh, my goodness. The amount of free Oasis people would drink. They actually stopped people from drinking oasis on their break because they realized just how much oasis was just being drunk by the employees uh, it was it was a good time though you know i was i was healthy there i didn't really eat the mcdonald's meals on break because i was always wearing my retainer so it was like a win-win my teeth stay straight which still got this winning smile and i don't get massively overweight from eating mcdonald's five days a week which to be fair like it's understandable why some McDonald's employees do, do go a little bit off the rails when it comes to, you know, their health because they're literally eating McDonald's every day. There are some people, and I'm sure if you've been in a workplace, there's that one person that goes for as much overtime as they can possibly get. There would be people that work every day for three days, for three weeks straight at McDonald's. Like, I'm pretty sure that's illegal, but people kind of do it. They do kind of bend the rules a little bit as far as, you know, as far as rules go. McDonald's are a little bit, you know, kind of sus. But honestly, I had some good times and I was only there for six months. It's a saffron octane. And I'll always look back to my days at McDonald's with fond memories because it was during my time at McDonald's that I laid the foundation for the channel that you see today. When I joined McDonald's, I had about 700 subscribers on YouTube on this channel. And then when I left McDonald's, I had 66,000 subscribers six months later and now here we are four years later and we have 860,000 subscribers which is crazy we're getting close to the big one million the dream it's a lime standard i wanted that to be a black standard for the dream but honestly yeah my, my experience at mcdonald's it was how you would expect uh it was an interesting time of my life i did have fun genuinely did it was it, it's if you've worked a job it just is what it is, isn't it? Especially when it's your first job. You just kind of accept the low parts. I actually did. Like, thinking back, I enjoyed it for what it was worth. It's great to earn your own money. I mean, granted, all of the money I earned at McDonald's got spent on Rocket League. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It is a good thing I had no, uh, you know, no responsibilities. Because, you know, McDonald's did not pay a lot. Six pound an hour. That is not a lot at all. Sky blue standard. Man, we're getting so many standards. But there we go. That was my experience of working in McDonald's. What else do we have? Talk about how messed up solo queuing for tournaments is. I mean, yep, of course, 100%. It's been, it's a bit of a rip. You'll go against an SSL team and you'll have a platinum player on your team because someone decided to duo queue with their mate and it just never, ever, ever ends well. And I hope they can, basically, if you're solo queuing, I think there will be enough people playing to find 
other solo queue mates, at least for the first round, because that's where the weekly rewards happen, and that's where good things happen. I think they should, because they can always find me teammates around my MMR faultlessly. They should be able to find me opponents around my MMR as well, not opponents that are 400, 500 MMR above me. I don't want to be playing, uh, you know, RLCS players, genuinely, or rival series challengers. I don't want to be playing these people, not in the first round. Give it to me in the final, make it a difficult title to obtain. I'm cool with that, but just... Leave it out the first round, yeah? Because we need to be getting past that first round. But there we go. Tournaments are broken. It is what it is. We'll just move swiftly on. ESL. A lot of people want me to talk about the, the European Super League, but I, I have touched on that. How did you keep going when you started? Also, was your progression very slow? I assume you're talking about YouTube and everything like that. That's the one thing I can really talk about. So I started my first ever channel, and it wasn't to be a YouTuber. I didn't even know you could do YouTube full-time back then. I think that might have been a Crimson Breakout, which is pretty cool. But I started my first channel, and within a year... Now, this isn't to say I uploaded daily, but I uploaded some videos, some magic tricks, some short films, comedy sketches, all the stuff that everyone likes to do when they first get a camera and they want to mess about with editing and filming and stuff. I got 15 subscribers in my first year. Bud Sienna! Oh, that is not all we need. 15 in my first year. But then again, I did have another channel called Mr. Magic 923. I don't believe there's any videos up. That I think that channel is long gone. Uh, I did. You've got a few hundred subscribers on there doing magic tricks, tutorials. I think back in the day in early 2010s of YouTube, one way that was actually quite decent at getting a new channel views and exposure when you had no previous videos and no loyal audience was a how-to video. If you could create a tutorial for some kind of trick or do a generic title like how to make a coin disappear, how to make a card disappear, all of which I've done by the way, and if you search up all day card tricks in one word with no spaces, you will find a channel that I managed to get to a thousand subscribers adopting that principle. Back in 2013, I uploaded like five magic videos in the space of a week and then just left the channel alone and it's gained over a thousand subscribers over the years just because it's got those keyword specialized tutorial videos so i did magic and stuff but honestly yeah the, the growth is slow take pick a pixel for example i was lucky enough to be fair to reach 100 subscribers in my first month of uploading videos and then a thousand subscribers within just over six months of uploading videos and then you know 50,000 subscribers within a year it really was exponential and it definitely was right place right time sort of thing so within the first year and a half of making the channel i was at 200,000 subscribers and i was doing it for a living but it's still whilst it was quite quick and it did go quite quick quite quick and you can grow a channel quickly these days with the virality of the internet I would still say it was it was a it was a steady growth, not a slow growth, but definitely a steady growth combined with being in the right place at the right time. And I cannot be happier with that. Now another question I got asked about, and similar with YouTube and everything else, it was about motivation and how you stay motivated and everything like that. And I thought about this yesterday because I had a bit of a low moment, just a little moment. I thought to myself. Am I providing good content? Which I do believe I am. I think I'm entertaining. I think we're doing good stuff on the channel. There's a titanium white flamethrower. I always get flamed in the comments for skipping over black and white flamethrowers. So there you go. That one's for you guys. And I was thinking to myself, I feel a little bit low. You know, I, I, I normally I'm so energetic. I'm so positive. Like right now I'm in the camera. I'm, I'm in front of the camera having a good time. I feel a bit weird. And then I thought to myself, is this what demotivation feels like? Or is this what burnout feels like? What is this that I am feeling and experiencing right now? Because I even had a, a chat with, with my friend Max Kazell, who is Kazell on YouTube and the Kazell on Twitch. I, I, I told him my situation. He said, are you experiencing burnout? And I, I was genuinely like, I don't know. I've never experienced burnout before. Not really. You know, I thought to myself, boy, I could do with a day off. I could do with a break, you know, and then you take a small break. You know, I don't miss a day of uploads because I'm very much on that. But I record ahead of time. I take a day off. I take Sundays off for the most part from YouTube every single week. So I never really experienced burnout, mostly because I do take a day off every single week. But then I thought to myself, it's a day I'm due to record and I feel just a little bit deflated. I don't. And it was such a weird feeling. And the, the motivation just wasn't there. You know, I still enjoy making videos. I still love making videos. But yesterday was a prime example where the motivation just wasn't there. So how do you stay motivated? I think sometimes it has to be discipline. If it's something you want to do and it's something you enjoy, you have to tell yourself to do it. Because motivation is fleeting and it doesn't last for everyone. Yesterday, I was very fortunate in the fact that I wasn't necessarily motivated to record. And then I found an external source of motivation, luckily, through Rocket League. Like, 
I wasn't expecting it, but Rocket League happened to drop the new Lamborghini car. And with that Lamborghini car sparked the motivation and I made the video that you would have seen on the channel a few days ago with the Lamborghini. My motivation came as a direct sort of impact from Rocket League and external circumstances, but... Rocket League aren't going to release a new car every day. Rocket League aren't going to release a new crate series every day. There's not going to be a tournament video to film every day, which, of course, I absolutely love. Sometimes you have to just tell yourself, Oi, if it's something you want to do, you have to be disciplined. That's the thing. There's motivation. There's discipline. Discipline, if you're truly disciplined, never leaves. It never leaves. You might take a break here and there, but you can be disciplined with your breaks as well. So motivation is great. I love the fire you get from motivation. I'm sure you guys too do too but the way you kind of deal with it and manage it is by relying on discipline and enjoying motivation motivation is an added little bonus that helps you through the tasks maybe you do or don't want to do you can either not want to do it or want to do it and motivation can be a huge help for that but you've got to rely on your discipline that is that is what i will say uh, there someone said what games do you play honestly it literally is just rocket league and then when i get you know a little bit done with rocket league whether i go on a massive losing streak whether i feel like even if i'm not winning if i'm not losing a lot but i'm winning and losing sort of equal amounts and i'm not going up in mmr it starts to get the point of like diminishing returns for the first hour or so i enjoy it regardless because i love playing rocket league i love the game i love scoring good goals i love running into you guys in ranked Oh, I got baited again. I was about to celebrate with a Crimson Octane, but it is Burnt Sienna once again. I reckon, how many trade-ups do we have left? We have 54 more to go. We've had two Painted Octanes in this amount of trade-ups. So I don't, you know, that, that doesn't say statistically that we can guarantee, which you never can, another Painted Octane. But if we do get one, I would absolutely love it. Uh, but I do like playing Fortnite once I'm, you know, done with Rocket League. And I know it's a bit of a meme, it's a bit of a joke, but they have so many extra game modes now i'll just as likely log on to fortnite and i'll see a game mode that i like you know whether that's sniper shootout one shot obviously you know i love snipers even the arsenal game mode which is like gun game in fortnite i do love that game mode and it's nice to just kill half an hour or something and just have fun and on the topic of motivation and discipline that we spoke about before i think like i said it's important to be disciplined with managing your your workload you know be disciplined with taking breaks be disciplined with enjoying yourself and having a good time because if you're not having a good time you don't have to do something you truly don't this is what i really thought about when i was thinking about you know taking an afternoon off making videos when i had originally scheduled to make videos and that's when i struggle is when i've told myself right you're planned to make a video today so this has to happen sometimes it's okay to not do that and like with my football channel I always, I, I make myself upload on the football channel because I don't want to miss a week. I don't want to miss a week of predictions or anything like that. But I don't know if I'm going to continue the football channel into the, the far, far future. Because at the moment, it feels like I'm just making the football videos just for the sake of making the videos and not missing a day. And I thought to myself, do I actually really enjoy making the videos anymore? For the football channel, that is. Because I still, uh, every time I ask myself, do I enjoy making videos from Rocket League? The answer is always a resounding yes. And that's why I've been able to do it for years. But I've been doing the football channel for nearly three years now. Finally, a Fennec. That's ideal. And it's starting to get to the stage where I'm thinking, maybe I still love watching football. I think that was a white roadhog, as I skipped over. Maybe I love watching football and all that stuff. But do I love, and this is the key word, love making football videos anymore? And the answer, I'm not sure. And that, that that's a worry. That's something that makes me think maybe I'm, I should just stop doing the football channel. Because it, I, always, I always call the football channel a hobby. But if I'm not enjoying it anymore as much, for example. Oh, it's forest green. <laughs> then it's no longer a hobby. So that's, that's where I'm at now. I think motivation, discipline, it all comes if you enjoy it. And if it's something like YouTube and you're like me, you will be enjoying it. So what I'm going to do, we're going to finish these very rare trade-ups. Last episode, to be fair, was just absolutely outrageous. We got painted octanes and painted standards in this video. I think we got more painted standards in this video than the last video, and only one less painted octane. But the Rocket League gods have not smiled down on us today as of yet, because we don't have a white octane really or anything too crazy to celebrate. So I'm going to do these trade-ups, then I'll trade up to exotics, and maybe throw in a few spicy black markets in there, just to say thank you for you lot, you know, spending your time with me for another very rare trade up podcast i should have asked this at the beginning but if you want to see me the last few episodes i've done 300 import slash very rare to import trade ups do you want me to continue going higher 
that is a possibility. So let me know. 24. We finally got the 24 Fenix to fill a trade window. <laughs> so I have up to 11 black market trade ups or exotic to black market trade ups to do here. So I don't think they can come painted because they are from drop trade ups. So the goal, I mean, it, it's it's got to be dueling dragons. It's got to be dissolver. It's got to be mainframe. Something S tier. We we can we can work with these black markets and eventually they're all going to go to a good home. You know, they're all going to get given away eventually at some point. But less of the popcorn. Wet paint is fine but it's not painted so please if we can just get some of the, the big ones shattered is that shattered is decent i'll take it i'm pretty sure if i'm not mistaken if you want to duel in dragons uh you need to put the lobos in oh, tune. <laughs> i was gonna say i'm pretty sure that the the shattered is has sort of fallen from grace it's not necessarily as insane as it once was i think when it first came out in crazy come painted it was all crazy uh and it was also i believe in the crate with the fennec so it was just a really hyped crate but now it's kind of, it's pretty much tanked. Toon, one of the worst ones. We're trading them up. We're not getting much. Hexed, can't be painted. This could, we got a couple more to do. Maybe one more. One more after this Neuro Agitator. This is it. Okay. This is literally it. We're not trading up any of the other things. We might as well, let's keep a Zowie wheel. Why not? Let's trade this up. Is it going to be big? A Toon! Another Toon! How many tunes do we want? The, the, dude, the temptation to trade these up because I know I'm never going to sell them is very real. But we're not going to do that. If we go to manage inventory and go to most recent black markets, they'll be in the archive, I'd imagine. Hold up. These aren't even archived. We could archive all of these bad boys. Let's do it. Keep trading. Keep archiving. Get it all in the archive. Then we can have a little look at what it is we have here in the game. These are all non-tradable, right? They are. Look at this archive. 22 tunes, storm watches, dissolvers, sub zeros. We got it all. It's all in the archive. We have thousands. We have we have thousands basically at this point. <laughs> but that is going to do it for this little video. If you did enjoy it, please do drop a like on it. Subscribe down below to join the Pixel Army. I have been Pixel. You have been awesome. And I'll see you in the next video very soon.